It is evident the way the 14 nations who are part of the FIPIC have responded, reacted to Prime Minister Narendra Modi coming there with a business delegation. When Prime Minister Marape, the way he received Prime Minister Narendra Modi, touching his feet, taking his blessings, that itself shows how deeply rooted people of this region are with culture, how much they are aware and how much they appreciate India's initiative of trying to represent nations who have largely been passed over so far. What US President Joe Biden did or was compelled to do has not gone down well with these nations. There is a lot of question about why President Biden first decided to come to Papua New Guinea and secondly that if he could come up to G7 why couldn't he spend some more time and also come to Papua New Guinea. A lot of these nations in the Asia Oceania region for long have been looked at as plus flyover nations. But India wanting to represent the global south has now got the assurance of 14 nations who say that they will back India at larger multinational forums and these this commitment is a very, very important one for India at the WTO, at the UN, while India promises to back the interests and champion the interests of the Global South. As India wants to assume this leadership of the Global South, this kind of support is significant. This is not the first FIPIC summit. This is the third one. And uh, over the last two or three years, this engagement has only deepened, become richer, become far more vibrant. Also, the president of Palau conferring their national award on the prime minister also shows how much these nations appreciate the attention India is giving to them. This economics or this engagement is a give and take. Indian businesses engaging with these nations via ocean trade and also increasing the footfall of Indian businesses into these nations and vice versa is also significant. That Bhojpuri is the national language of Fiji is perhaps lost on a lot of us. So whether it is Fiji, whether it is Papua New Guinea, whether it is Palau or many of these nations, there is a deep-rooted Indian ethos which perhaps now is being rekindled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit. And as he moves from G7 to Papua New Guinea and heads towards Sydney, Australia, there are a lot of people who are watching carefully what is the tone that India is setting. What is the manner in which Prime Minister Narendra Modi is navigating these very steep and perhaps some important bumps geopolitically? China weighing in in this Indo-Pacific region, the pressure perhaps it is exerting on the US to steer clear of this region and vice versa. Though Western nations looking at India's growing clout and what it will mean when it comes to the WTO platform and at the UN. This will all perhaps unfold in the days to come, in the months to come and in the years to come. But for now, Prime Minister's engagement significant, these nations appreciating the fact that those nations which are critical, important, vital, strategically, geopolitically, but largely seen over or glossed over and forgotten in the larger global conversation, now find a certain level of representation because of Prime Ministers uh, going to Papua New Guinea. He brings with those good tidings into Australia and the Australian community, the business community here, the Indian diaspora here will also be enthused by the message that he has to bring to them. Overall, this is a very significant visit between G7, the FIPIC and of course the bilateral conversation that he's going to have and the engagement he's going to have with the Indian diaspora in Sydney, Australia. That quad happened on the sidelines of G7, took off a little bit of sheen from what is going to be expected in Sydney, but it's also given India perhaps an open play. That Japan, that uh, US is not present here allows Prime Minister Narendra Modi to flex a little bit more of his diplomatic muscle and of course exude a little more of his personal charm to prevail upon those present here who are still not perhaps convinced about the idea that is India, the opportunity that is India and perhaps the uh, impetus that India now gets in, on the global platform. So on all aspects from G7 in Japan to Papua New Guinea, the FIPSC summit to what's now going to unfold in Sydney, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit here is significant on the cusp of him completing nine years in governance and exuding a certain confidence that come 2024, he will be back at the helm. This is Anand Narsimhan in Sydney for CNN News 18.